The goal is no longer about a debate at all. It's about going back. This again was not planned. Our model goes, the very last thing we talk about is digital citizenship and media literacy, starting with your center so you can engage. But I hadn't anticipated our conversation to go there. What I'm hearing you say is as we engage in citizenship, if we really do practice listening, not in a cursory way to check it off a box to say I'm being a good citizen, but actually holding enough space for someone to be able to reflect, self-reflect and find voice for their looking back home, looking mm -hmm. into their home and doing the Odysseus thing, but, and then just kind of sitting in that co-humanity of our journeys, our own heroes journeys that we have to sort out and holding space for that. So that, that I'm really, really grateful that, that that emerged. I have one more question for you. Um, do you have time for one more question? Yeah. Um, I'm actually going to insert one thought before the question. As I listened to you, I think of one of the books that we did share, one of the more modern books. Not, it's not a, it's a nonfiction. Um, Lead yourself first. Mm. It talks about the definition of solitude, being able to be in your own mind, be in your own self without other voices. So we may read, we may engage, we may listen, we may study, but truly coming back and deciding, okay, but who am I? And, and owning that separate from any other voices. So I just wanted, I, I it was fun. I, I really appreciated that language around this process. I think it relates to the touchstone process that solitude is finding your own truth. Um, your own center, your own grounding, your own principles, your own compass, whatever that language is. Okay, the last question I have is in a digital world where there are so many voices, you, you talk about all the tools you have and how the, the corollary to that is how easy it is to be distracted, to mm -hmm. be at the roots all the time, to be parroting other voices rather than finding our own or rediscovering and feeding that process of staying centered. What advice do you have for your peers and, you know, the generation just behind you? How do you make time for, for that? What advice would you give them in terms of managing digital tools and prioritizing um, centering activities? Another really good question. Uh, my advice is very practical. And very simple. <laughs> I so my the social platforms I participate in are primarily Instagram, Facebook, and LinkedIn. During the week, during my work week, which is basically like Monday through Saturday, I just straight up delete Instagram and Facebook. <laughs> uh, and this does a couple things for me. One, I don't waste time on the inane on the inane stuff that just has no worth pretty objectively, right? It does has real, no real relevance. It's just for humor, just for entertainment. And it's fun. I'm a big meme guy. I, I love my memes and anyone knows me well knows that I always have something funny to share, but it's not useful when I have so many other things to do. Um, and the secondary, the secondary effect from that is I'm automatically cutting out a lot of the noise and a lot of the voices. I just don't, I just don't have access to it. And it's not something that's constantly in, in my brain. Uh, my biggest advice is watch how you're spending your time. I right? like very objectively take a step back. And this is what I had to do, especially with Instagram, where I just find myself, you know, I'm tired. I've had a long day. I'm just going to scroll for a bit. And that usually would turn into an hour or two or even three or four. And it, it just, it doesn't do anything for me. It, in the long, in the grand, in any scheme of things, not even grand scheme of things, any scheme of things not doing anything for me. But as well, there would be a political side always. There'd be an activist side. There would be an information side. There would be a fact-based side. I would have all these different voices that were constantly filling me up with information coming from a lot of different platforms and a lot of different stories too. Whenever anyone posts anything to a social media website, they're almost hiding. They're creating a post, a finite amount of words about a bunch of emotions, experiences, and interactions they've had with other people. 
that more than likely have been interacting and come to a head over the course of many years to be represented in this little tiny blog post. We a don't have all post. of that story that carries back. You don't have their touchstone, right? Yes. And maybe they don't even have their touchstone. So they're writing out of anger. They're writing out of impatience. They're writing out something that isn't even true to them. How are you supposed to take that in just for that be like, oh, I know exactly what this is talking about. Mm-hmm. And so what instead I do is I spend my time deliberately in audiobooks and physical books. I have a long list of, of books that are recommended by peers, by people that I respect, by mentors, and I just keep a list. And I have three different platforms for audiobooks. And I'm just constantly filling them in. So in my drive time, uh, I love music as well. There are oftentimes I will listen to music, but I often fill my drive time with listening to audiobooks when I go to the gym, when I'm biking to and from school, I'll often fill that time with audiobooks and listening on two times speed. I don't know, not everyone can do that, but or wants to do that. I listen to everything on two times speed. So I'm able to go pretty quick through some books and I just will create time throughout the rest of the day to read a physical book as well. And what I have found is as I've read broadly in so many different categories from fiction, from fantasy, from nonfiction, historical fiction, I've read a lot of self-help, a lot of of psychology books. I find the same stories repeated over and over and over again, the same truth, the same touchstone repeating, partly because I think I'm looking for it because I already have a a fairly well-established touchstone, but then I'm interacting with all this other media and I'm ooh. I like that. I can, I can take that as my touchstone or write down some quotes or write down some thoughts for each, each one of those. I usually take notes. So I have some sort of record. Ooh, I like that. I like this. By the time I get to the end of my week, I filled myself with a bunch of smaller touchstones. I'm kind of armored up. It, it sounds kind of dramatic, but it's true. So when I go and re-enter into social media and I'm reading all the updates from people and I'm reading the latest things that people are angry about or frustrated with, or even the happy things, right? I'm able to interact with them from a much more centered place, at least on my side. A little more neutral. Uh, a little more neutral. It's all, it's all I can control anyway. At very least, what I, how I interact with, with the rest of the world. And frankly, it's, it's the same answer as how to find a touchdown. It requires a lot of work and it requires a lot of discipline. There's nothing that's easy about this. I don't claim to be perfect with it in the slightest. I still waste lots of time on Instagram. I still love my memes. I still have all this sort of stuff that I know objectively as I'm saying, like, none of this matters, but I'm laughing really hard at it. <laughs> but so I, yeah, this is not claiming to perfection. This is a, an invitation into a journey that I'm finding very productive and very- It's neat. its own hero's journey in, a, in and of yeah, itself. Right? <laughs> but what I am finding is I am learning how to be more and more true to myself that I am consistently working back towards Ithaca. I'm consistently working back towards my Penelope. I want to be centered because centered is where I feel the best. It's very selfish in a lot of ways. I feel the best when I'm centered because when I'm giving all these opinions and not really believing in any of it, I feel fake. I feel like I'm not really interacting with the world truthfully. I don't feel like I'm able to be seen truthfully. And if there's anything that is consistent across these sources that we want to be seen, we want to be understood, the only way that can happen is if we understand ourselves and are willing to engage with other people wanting to understand them. It can't come without a touchstone. It can't come without something centered within yourself. And frankly, it cannot come if the primary mode of media ingestion is through opinions, through opinion pieces. There has to be some sort of objectivity that you find you can cling to that can then help you sift through the nuance. So my advice is very practical is how bad do you want it? (laughs) How bad do you want that feeling? Because it's, it's great. It's a great feeling. The times where I am able to touch my touchstone and be aligned with that, it feels amazing. It requires so much work and discipline and it's something I'm continually working on but I do find it very worthwhile and very meaningful. And so anyone who wants that, just do it. Talk to people who are passionate about it, get hyped about it with them, but just do it. There's no other alternative and there's no shortcut. We learned that from the hero's journey more than anything else. There's no shortcut to something meaningful. Thank you so much for sharing your thoughts. I'm going to end with 
one last thing that I think defines how, how this does work for you, that often when you meet someone, you ask, what's your favorite book? And when you want to understand someone, I have watched you read that book. So thank you for your example that you've given me. You have helped me learn and value this process more. And I really appreciate you taking the time to share your, your experiences and thoughts on this. It was a pleasure to be here. I, I love talking about this. So it was, it was a pleasure. I appreciate your questions. Appreciate your time. Thanks, John.